Plus some 5.4 is on complex numbers. So we've previously talked about squares, and probably when you were in like eighth grade or maybe ninth grade, you would see a number like this. And you would say, well, this problem can't be done. But your teacher would say, no, when you take the square root of this, there is no number times itself that would give you negative four, and you wanted to write no solution, but your teacher probably said, write no real solution, or no real number. And the reason you wrote it as no real number is because there actually is a solution to this. There is two numbers that multiply together to give you negative four that are the same number. That number is just called an imaginary number. So now we have the real number set and the imaginary number set. Um, imaginary numbers are used in uh, circuits, so like with electricity. Um, there are few places it's used, just a few, um, but we still need to go over them. It, it will be on the ACT, at least I would say one question. So we want to make sure we know how to do these. Plus we need to know how to solve when we have a negative number. So the imaginary unit is called I. I is the imaginary unit. I is equal to the square root of negative 1. Also, I squared is negative 1. So these are the ways we're going to convert. So let's just talk about properties. So if I had something like, um, so this would just be example one, square root of negative five. When you see the square root of negative five, what that means is I have the square root of negative one times the square root of five. And the square root of negative one is the same thing as i. So my answer would be i square roots of five. Now when I see a problem like that, when I see something like square root negative five, I'm not gonna go through this whole process. I'm gonna say, okay, I know that the square root of a negative produces i. So when I see that, I'm gonna cross that off inside there and put an i on the outside. So let's do this one. Square root negative seven. So instead of doing this whole process, we know that when we have a negative it's going to cross off and put an i on the outside. So the answer to this one would be i square root 7. Okay, what about a problem like this? Parenthesis i square root 5 squared. So here I'm going to square both terms. So I get i squared times square root 5 squared and i squared is negative 1, and square root 5 squared is 5, so the answer to this one, a simplified version, would just be negative 5. Now, we're going to work more and more with that. Um, we're going to uh, first go into solving. So let's start with uh, this example for solving. This is a problem like we had in the last lesson. We would have something like 2x squared plus 26 equals negative 10. So if I was going to work this problem, I knew what x was. I would square it, take it times 2, add 26. But I don't know x, so I have to work in reverse order. So I'm going to start by subtracting 26 from both sides. So I get 2x squared equals negative 36. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so I get x squared equals negative 18. Now, all of the problems that we did in the last lesson, when we would end up with x squared, we would always have a positive number here because we didn't know about the imaginary number system yet. So now to get x by itself, I'm going to square root both sides. So I get x equals, and remember when we square root, we have plus or minus square root negative 18. So then I know that anytime I have a negative under the square root, it's going to put an i on the outside. And then I want to think about the number 18. 
18 is 2 times 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. So see where I write the 3? It goes right in front of the i. The i kind of is sort of like a variable in this case, but it represents something. So my answer would be plus or minus 3i square root 2. That's what x would equal.